Hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on how we use Excel to calculate a random standard normal variable, which is an extremely common application in quantitative finance. In order to back into the way that we do this, to explain, I've plotted the familiar bell curve. Technically, we are looking at a normal probability density function, sometimes called a probability mass function and it's normal so the elegance of it is that we only need two parameters to describe it a mean in this case zero that's where it peaks and because it's a standard normal and not just any normal by definition standard means the mean is at zero and then because it's standard the standard deviation is going to be one so we have one standard deviation to the left two standard deviation to the left three standard deviation to the left and we can also go positive to the right. The normal is symmetrical, so we have one, two, three. Technically, these lines here are asymptotic to the x-axis, but by the time we get out to three standard deviations on both sides, we've covered most of the area under the curve. Okay, so with that as a background, now we consider the Excel function, which is equals norm s inv, which takes as a parameter uh, probability from 0 to 1.0 or 100 percent. So if I say equals norm s n of 50 percent, it will return 0, and that's because at 0 standard deviations, that's right in the middle here, the area under the curve to the left of that location constitutes 50 percent of the area under the total curve. So in this case, zero is my halfway mark. So that's what we use this norm s in function for. Just give you a couple more examples to make that clear. Now look at equals norm s in where 13% is the is the input. That returns negative 1.13. Why is that? That's because at negative 1.13 standard deviations, if I pick that point and I look to the left, the area under the curve is 13% of the total area under the curve. And then if we go out and say equals norm s n 98%, I get 2, positive 2, because at positive 2 standard deviations, the area to the left of that is fully 98%, or almost all of the area under the curve. That's how we can use Excel to generate a standard random normal variable, because we just need to give this norm s n function a random number from 0 to 100 percent because that's going to describe how much area under the curve we want and it will return for us a standard random normal variable some location here on the x-axis that's expressed in terms of the standard normal distribution function so for example now I'm going to run trials here I've got the norm inv function so that's pretty close to the norm s in function. The only difference here is the norm in function allows you to pick the mean and the standard deviation. If I instead, let me just show you by comparison, if I said norm s in that function, this function here takes only one parameter, the probability, because that s indicates it's a standard distribution and so it it that means we already know the mean and standard deviation will be respectively 0 and 1. Now if I use this second formula norm inv then I, um, I get two additional inputs I get to specify the mean and the standard deviation so I've used the norm inv function and then I said the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 so that means I'm automatically doing the same thing as if it were this norm s inv function okay so that's my function then I'm just gonna run trials and so here's the formula I say equals norm inv and then there's three parameters first the random variable so that function by itself is going to return a number from 0 to 1.0 or, or 0 to 100 percent that's my randomizing and then here I get to specify the mean which we set as 0 and here I get to specify the standard deviation which we set as 1 so given the random number I'm gonna get returned that inverse of the cumulative standard normal distribution function and so what I'm gonna get there as an output in this case it's 0.42 but what I'm getting is 
realistically, if I just go back to here, I'm going to tend to get numbers between negative 3 and 3.0 along this standard normal distribution function. And so that's in fact what I get. By definition, if I run a large number of trials, and then I go to plot these, they should start to approximate the normal distribution. So now I'm going to hit F9 recalculate, and you can see it keeps randomizing, and over to the right, I've in fact taken these trials and plotted them on a frequency or histogram, and now I'll hit F9, and you can see each time I do in fact get a different random plot, and I'm only plotting here about um, 100 trials or so, so it's going to be very approximate. I would lead more trials to get closer to the normal distribution, but you can see, in effect, I'm generating random trials that correspond to the standard normal distribution function. And by the way, there's nothing to say I need to run it as if it were a normal distribution. In this column here, I've used a log normal distribution. Same thing, it takes as an input the random function. And if I go down here, instead, I'm randomizing the log normal distribution, which is not like the normal, it is not symmetrical, and in fact it's non-negative, it starts at zero, so we can see here we can really uh, simulate any number of random distributions. And then finally, what would I do with that? Well, a very typical application would be to use that random normal variable, that random standard normal variable, to maybe simulate a stock price, which I've done here. I've said the starting price is $10. I'm going to assume the annual, the annual expected return is 12%, and then I divide by the number of trading days. And then similarly, I'm going to, I'm going to assume the annualized volatility is about 30%, which I also convert into a daily format. So these are translated into daily formats, but, but, rough, but I, roughly, I just need two parameters here if I want to be real simple about it. I say I need an expected return, in this case 12% annualized, and a volatility, in this case 30% annualized. And then I start with that $10 stock price, and then I'm going to run a time series. And really, this is really uh, safe to say this is really a very basic kind of Monte Carlo simulation. So all I do here is I take the $10 from the day before, and I add it to that $10 multiplied by my expected return plus, plus this is the key randomization right here my standard deviation or my volatility that's my sigma up here multiplied by random here is that standard random normal variable so basically I'm multiplying the volatility that I give as an input by the standard random normal variable and that allows me to oh I, I keep doing that for each period in this case daily and you can look over here to the right I'll hit F9 to recalculate that allows me to randomize my time series as if it were a Monte Carlo simulation. But again, the interesting thing about this is, is I'm, because I'm randomized with that norm env function or norm s env, my returns are normally distributed. And then this series here is, corresponds to a expected return that I've given it and also a volatility that I've given as an input. So you can see how uh, how it's not too difficult to get to this very basic kind of Monte Carlo simulation. So that's uh, about all I have for that, and thanks for watching.